Hello all, welcome to Fluid Shots. Today we will be discussing about droplet transmission. Now why it is important, let's before diving deep into this droplet transmission and going into other levels of it, let's understand that why we have taken this uh, subject for today. Now with this ongoing pandemic, right, which has almost engulfed the world population in its dark blanket, right, and has put the world at still for more than six months five to six months so with this what is very important for us to get ourselves aware not only with the disease but also its root cause so knowing that will help us as well as our family and community to be better equipped not only for the present or and also for the future so let's start with the session so what is sneezing Sneezing universally is recognized as a physical reaction in people, but people often fail to realize what it does to the body. In fact, the myths and superstitions they have been swirling around sneezing for almost as long as the civilizations. So we'll go to that part in the next slide. But why the sneezing happens altogether? So when your nasal mucous membrane, right, is irritated, your body expels. Like as you can see in the first picture, right, it's expelling through a forceful explosion of air through nose and mouth that's what happens and when it is expelling so it's expelling tiny droplets of water right you can see not water at least you can see liquid droplets that will be much apt right here right so these droplets do contain some um, kind of electrolytes presence from saliva like it can contain some k k plus na plus cl minus kind of electrolytes along with that some pathogens, some viruses, bacteria, whatever. So that makes it even much more dangerous, right? So what happens basically is the transportation of pathogens from one body to another body or from a infected body, from an infected body to a healthy body. Now that makes it much more dangerous, right? So with the help of fluid mechanics, what we'll try to understand is, we'll try to understand better the nature as well as the dynamics of the spread of the pathogens through sneezing and understand that how it can help us contain the pandemic right now this is not just limited to uh, your human beings it's it's a widespread uh, throughout the mammals so obviously you can see right cat uh, also that uh, can sneeze and some other animal they can also sneeze so basically mammals they can sneeze uh, and another interesting trivia is that uh, when you're asleep you don't sneeze because that is uh, termed as some REM that is known as rapid eye movement so that is uh, that particular segment uh, of your day especially when you are falling asleep so basically it, during that time you are in the deep sleep and when you are in deep sleep your reflexes don't act uh, properly that means your uh, reflexes get delayed uh, to the brain and hence you know you don't sneeze during that time so for sneezing the minimum requirement is that you have to be awake and aware right so that was a very basic definition of what is sneezing now let's go to some interesting fact that's the myths and the superstitions so especially when you're in india you hear a lot of myths and superstitions especially with sneezing around right so you just can't sneeze around so the first is if you sneeze with your eyes open you know they might pop out but that's absolutely wrong yeah definitely the blood pressure behind your eyeball that will increase but definitely it won't pop out it's you know, you closing your eyes is simply just a reflex action. It's a normal reflex action, like how if a mosquito is biting you, you'll put your hand above that mosquito to try to kill it. So that's the reflex. So, it's, so closing your eyes is simply a reflex action. The second thing is your heart will not stop while you sneeze. People do say that your heart will stop. It doesn't happen. Definitely there is a contraction of your chest constricting the blood flow, but this is definitely not happening. The next is... Is someone talking behind your back definitely there might be situations or coincidences but not because of sneezing or at this or because someone is talking behind your back therefore you're sneezing so that is absolutely wrong so you won't buy that the next is uh, whether it's a bad luck or it's a good luck so even in different cultures in polish cultures if you sneeze at right hand side it's a good luck if you sneeze at left hand side it's a bad luck so those scientifically they don't add up to anything so we won't buy that also then the another interesting one is uh, the god bless you version so where uh, you know people say that when you sneeze 
your soul tries to come out of your body and uh, saturn or the evil spirits they try to catch hold of it right so in order to uh, you know prevent you uh, from the clutches of saturn people around you they t- they they call god and they tell god bless you so that you know you get your soul back so definitely that is also that might be a myth so myth is obvious it's not Uh, we can't tell that it's completely truth or completely false it's someone's truth so let some sect of people believe it to be true but we as uh, you know people of science will rather believe in science much more than the myths and superstitions but what we know is that neither it can be luck maybe not someone is talking behind our back or maybe not saturn is getting hold of our soul but definitely it's allergy which is getting a better hold of ourselves so it's better we do visit a doctor if you are having cold cough or sneezing especially at this time right when this whole pandemic of covid 19 is going around it's very important now let's understand this droplet physics right so just imagine in this picture how you have this boy is sneezing so when it's sneezing what is sneezing he's basically sneezing through this path just assume that he is sneezing through this path let us make this path where it is he is sneezing now if i am introducing yeah if i am introducing a man right which is just walking by the side of this person so what will happen this man will definitely come in contact with this infected atmosphere and definitely this healthy man might get infected mit researchers say that you know on an average a sneeze can go up to 25 feet distance just imagine how long is it spread how long is its you know range so that deadly it can be the second version of it is through air ventilations now why i told air ventilations is important because nowadays in all the modern buildings whether it's office buildings hospitals everything air ventilation is very important right so all the ventilations are all the buildings are air conditioned and also air ventilation is the only way how the air circulates throughout the building so basically when you know the person infected person is sneezing or coughing right the direction initially will be somewhere here but since your nose is just like a heat exchanger regenerative heat exchanger so whatever is coming out of this these are all hot and warm as compared to the atmosphere so being warm so they are lighter and they will try to move up right so once they move up they will enter into this air ventilation system and maybe this person is in room a and another person is in hospital and is in room b and what is connecting them maybe this common air ventilation so you know this infected air might go and infect this person even more right so that is not only an infected person it might be a healthy person also so this is also another uh, challenging problems which you have so not only in this case also you can see in your cars also so in cars also nowadays most of us we use our air conditioning system and we uh, put our glass on so when you sneezing or coughing so you know that air gets circulated inside the cabin and that is a big problem the second important thing which was which was not uh, very uh, you know understood in terms of this was flush so flush is a very common thing uh, definitely you are going for the washroom will do the flush so a lot of studies and research uh, uh, findings have showed that when you are flushing very tiny droplets of water they fall out of this place so once they fall so they will fall on this toilet seat they will fall on the surrounding places everywhere right so for the person who is flushing it for him the perception is that okay now it's clean everything is clean now i can go so what about the next person who comes in so you can see all these tiny droplets uh, being on this toilet seat cover on these surfaces so that means what these surfaces are exposed to pathogens and various uh, bacteria and viruses so it's very important to even understand this and you know while we are using public toilets or even toilets in our home we should clean it properly we should use nowadays i think we have those toilet seat sanitizers also right and properly clean the area because it's very important nowadays personal hygiene is at i think one of the most top priorities especially during this pandemic time so we have to understand that how droplets you know 
which might not be even visible to us we might think this is clean the surface is clean but it's not clean so next time you use it be careful and be conscious so after understanding that what these droplets can do right so these tiny droplets which are expelled from the mouth or maybe from the flush or from any source which is infected can you know spread the disease into multiple folds so that's how uh, we have super spreaders right who have this capability to spread the disease even more so we have to understand this and personal hygiene and community hygiene is at really higher stake at this point of time and we should do the correct do's and uh, save ourselves as well as our family and community from it so i think this is the basic very basic do's which you should do we should use a handkerchief we should if you don't have a handkerchief we should use our elbows otherwise the mask which everyone is prescribing we should use it at this point of time right another common picture which i see especially in india is that everyone spits wherever they want as if it's their property they'll spit everywhere so uh, so that's a very uh, bad habit i would say so not only here i think nowadays uh, if you if you observe properly in uh, the sports or the athletes right they also spit uh, while maybe running while playing a sport even i think those kind of activities also will uh, take a different turn after this pandemic right so once they will start uh, playing so they either have to carry a tissue with them or they will have to control you know this action not spitting anywhere so either you go for a dustbin or you go carry a tissue and the next thing is the flush right which is a very common thing yet very dangerous thing which i feel so always either you carry a, a you know toilet seat sanitizer if you're using a public toilet or you know you clean its um, its surroundings its vicinity if, if it's in home it's very very important so i think uh, with this we got a fair bit of idea about how this tiny droplets which are very very tiny right maybe some droplets are even less than 5 microns which are very even negligible or invisible to our naked eye can have such deadly impact right and this impact of contamination can be so so deadly that now this whole world is under its engulf right so i think with this uh, with this little introduction of uh, how droplet dynamics uh, can you know uh, affect pandemics and can scale up these pandemics who uh, will be much more conscious we will we'll try to respect the social distancing even more uh, personal hygiene and community hygiene will be our top priority so till then uh, stay safe and do take care of yourself thank you for listening to us